Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I'm going to explain as well as I may in, in terms of archetypal symbols the trans encounters I've been having uh, for the last number of years and, uh, and the effect that they've had on me. I think that these encounters have to do with someone that I know but I don't know who that person is, so um, obviously that person knows who they are, and I'm hoping that these, these explanations may help, as it seems to me that the performance art that I've been watching, or, or in my own terms, subject to um, over these years, has to do with the stuckness of the soul, of soul wounding in someone uh, I can't say who, and, and maybe quite a few people in the Atlantean age. Um, there have been skits, and I'll take one for starters. There was a skit featuring a trans person. That's a person who was born as a man and is now either dressed as or changed as to gender into a woman and and so the first the first person the first person in the first skit was a trans person and I have come up with a photo to show you it says trans on it but um, I, I could only come up with a photo of a woman but but the look and feel of it uh, of the trans person that I saw is very like this, very, very super feminine, very, very sexual, uh, very well made up, very, just very appealing to men, I feel. So I'm using that photo. Uh, actually, it's AI generated for the trans personality. And then in in the first case, and in another case as well, there was a character that I call the nanny, or the babysitter, or the mother substitute. And I have this image for that, the nanny. A much older person, born woman, and, and posing as woman in the skit, and a, about a foot shorter than the, the trans person. The nanny. Now, in the first skit, there was another person. That was the, what I call the makeup artist. They did not have a beard. It was a man, born as a man, it seemed to me. And very handsome, very good looking. The makeup artist, okay? If you got those three in your mind. So, so what happened was, I was at a spiritual retreat center. And I had been there many, many times before and in many other circumstances. In fact, I was one of the co-facilitators of a meetup there in the outdoors. The meetup was called Rumi and Meditation. I was one of three co-facilitators. And there was a particular spot where we all sat when we met uh, once a month or so when I was around town. I had the cart full of things that I needed for the meetup, and I was trundling the cart along the sidewalk on my way to the normal meetup place. And I saw at the meetup place, I saw sitting in what was usually my seat, this, this splendid trans person sitting in my seat. And next to the trans person the, was, was the nanny a person of much smaller stature. And um, I, as I walked up, I saw disappearing into the administration building of the retreat center, I saw the makeup artist. Apparently had just made up the people for the performance art. Okay, so uh, as, I, as I approached the trans person and the nanny, the trans person got up and and splendidly walked past me, paraded past me, 
with the nanny just behind or just nearby and then went off in the direction of the makeup artist. So the, the, the first thing I noticed is that the trans was, had taken my seat, had taken my role, had wanted, it seems to be, the star of my show. Along that line, there's a role that I play when I'm in a social situation. And, and that role is straight woman. I play the role of the straight woman and I dress very conservatively in most circumstances. And so, the conservative straight woman. Now this role is a pose so as to get along with other people because my true role as I feel it in the world right now is the role of light worker. I'm a light worker. But Nobody relates to that in the general world that I'm, I'm in and in the sacred circles that I'm in. They just don't recognize that role. So I pose as the older straight woman. And I was on my way to the meetup and I was, I was posing at that time as the older straight woman. Okay, very conservative. Now. There is this in addition that it seemed to me that the trans person thought of him herself as extremely good looking and that any straight woman would be very jealous of her and covetous of her beauty and might also attack her sexually or attack her in rage and that the nanny protected the trans from these types of attacks. That was what I got from that first encounter. Okay, so trans and the nanny who's a type of woman that can get along with trans and the makeup artist who is important to the role of the trans in, in, in being very beautiful and being very appealing to the man that the trans hopes to attract. So why were they there? Why were they there at the spiritual retreat center? They, they wanted to make a statement to me. They knew I was there because Meetup publishes its meetings. They knew that I was one of the coordinators, but but why me? Why would they be sitting there and then go away? Well, at first I thought maybe it was just a mistake. You know, maybe it was just a coincidence. But uh, recently I was at a church service and the whole skit was performed once again and the people involved sat down directly in front of me in the pew in front of me. So I began to get that this is a message specifically for me from someone that I don't know and that the message, without any words being spoken, uh, conveys a significance to, the, to, the, to that person that's, that I'm not aware of. So I'm trying to figure it out, okay? This is a treasure hunt. The next time, I was sitting in church, and it was just before the service started, and the trans person came in. Very ravishing trans person, dressed very seductively, very alluringly. It was a different trans person and a, and a different race and a nanny of the same race as this second trans person. A nanny sat right beside the trans, okay, and instead of the makeup artist, there was another, there was another performer standing in the aisle. That was a person that I call the nun. Now you see here the Madonna. I couldn't find a nun, to, but it was a nun in traditional habit that was standing against the wall and looking at me. So instead of that, because the overall look of the nun was very like this, very like the Madonna, very holy, very saintly, very sacred. Um, I, I'm using this image instead, the nun. 
Okay, so I was at church. I was dressed as a straight woman, very conservatively. Okay, very quiet, very demure. And I was sitting behind them. So the thing that the first thing that I got is that the dress code of the of the church was being violated by the trans person, not by the nanny, but by the trans person. And also that the the nun standing against the wall was not really a nun. The nun was a performance artist, I thought. And it seems to me that the nun was there, the nun was standing directly against the wall beside, between our two pews. It seemed to me that the nun was there to reinforce the nanny as a protector of the trans person, as if the trans person thought that I held rage towards them and that I would express it during the service. Now, my feeling about this is that it's it's likely that the trans person substituted me as the object of the rage that's within them. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little later on. You see, it seems to me that because the trans person dresses so ravishingly at church, even though that's not the dress code, that's not the accepted code of the church, it seems to me that the trans person finds it very important to be the only woman that's admired, the, the, the woman that outdoes all the other women in the church and obtains all the men. And in the trans person's second skit, there were two ways that women could be included in the trans worldview. The first was the nanny the protector, the one who is always loving no matter what the no matter what the trans does. Just as in the last skit. The second was the nun. And this is this was new. And this was I think at the church it was might have been a, a statement that this is just my guess, a statement that the role played by the trans at the church was sacred and ought to be taken as a sacred thing rather than being laughed at or sneered at or scoffed. Rather than me getting angry, you know, it ought to be taken as a sacred thing. Okay, so that was the second skit I'm going to talk about. There was another skit at the same church a little later on. In the parking lot, there was a woman or perhaps a demure trans person who was ushering people into the parking lot, dressed with exposure of the legs, with again with a uh, ignoring the dress code of of the church, and and very alluring but very demure, and that person I thought uh, that there may have been an intention to to attract me. In a, in a gay woman way, if it was a woman, or even if it was trans, uh, as a way of ushering me into uh, a world where, where genders are reversed, you know? To usher me into a different archetype for the trans world. We have the nanny, we have the nun, and it may be that that was an, an attempt to state that there's another possibility, and that is as the gay woman. Well, the problem is, I'm not these things. I'm the straight woman at the church. I'm the light worker online. Okay? I'm, I'm not a gay woman. So I, st I, I don't fit in. You see, I don't fit into that me you at all. I, you might even say that I'm in a different uh, timeline and dimension from the trans world. It's completely different from my world. And, and that way, I think that there would be a lot less friction, a lot less commotion if, if it were to be considered that I live in a different sort of reality. Now, I'll give you another example. Some while ago, there was an incredible skit as I exited 
the door of my local post office. Um, and again, this was using completely different characters, but somewhat similar roles. There was a trans person, but a, a different race, different from the other two, a different race, but, but very alluring, very good looking, and, and dressed in an outrageous fashion that was bound to attract attention walking towards me, towards the door of the post office, um, carrying two baby carriages behind. One of them had a lap dog in it. And uh, the roll of the lap dog, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I, th I thought it might have to do with an idea that a, that a woman might have that role with the trans person might have the role of um, pleasing their lap, if you get me, you know, might be considered a dog for being not very pretty compared to the trans person, you know, might be just the lap dog in the baby carriage that he carries along behind him. Then there was Standing besides the trans was the makeup artist, a different makeup artist, just standing there waiting for the play to unfold. There was no nanny. Uh, the feeling I got at that time was that my life was in mortal peril. And, and I'd like to explain about that a little because I exited right away. The trans was made up as, as a as an African-American homeless woman. And I think they thought, because of a photograph that was in my blog, they thought that I would think that they were my nanny or babysitter and that I would be attracted to them and want to talk to them. I thought, they thought, I was like their mother or mother substitute in that they held great rage against their mother, which they were transferring to me and thinking that I held great rage to them and that this mix-up about the rage would result in an outburst of rage against me that might involve physical violence. I say that partly because for many years prior to that, that same person in various guises had been stalking me wherever I went, stalking and stalking. Now from online, the prognosis for stalking is not so good. A lot of women lose their lives because of stalkers. And the police department does not seem to be very helpful in that. It's up to us women to think of a way to get free of these stalkers and to, to keep safe. Stalking, I think, has to do with uh, control, the, the need to control other people. And there's quite a bit online about controlling behavior and getting away from it and trying to find a social circle that, that talks and reaches compromises rather than attempting to control or manipulate other people. If, a, for instance, a person is trans, but undercover, and you, you as a straight woman meet this trans person, and then they get the notion that you're in on the secret, it's possible that in order to keep the secret of their, of their trans activities, they might stalk in trans guise so as to avoid detection, and that they might feel such a strong need to protect themselves that they might stalk and murder. So there's a very strong need to keep trans activity secret in many cases because they're not socially acceptable. And the trans person in the, these cases that I'm talking about was very greatly deeply undercover because of the makeup and the disguise made it very difficult to figure out who they really were. And uh, I, in each case, I got the feeling of being in mortal peril. And so there must have been like 
um, a load of negative emotion, uh, violent negative emotion behind the makeup, you know. Now, it's not socially acceptable to say this, so, uh, and I agree with society in general that there are many trans people who don't have this, this drawback of being dangerous. But in, in my case, because of the stalking, because of the skits by many different people, many different races, I feel there's been a lot of money put into the, this performance art with regard to me. And I'm not sure why. You know, I know that there's soul wounding. I know that there's uh, a hang-up. I, I just, you know, I wish I could be of more help to those of you that are experiencing this. I think that there's a sub-segment of trans that are extremely dangerous people. Maybe you all have ideas about it. I would welcome those ideas. And I hope that that the trans people if that may have been involved in this, if they reply, please, please do your best to be polite and to observe the decorum of this blog because, because uh, very impolite, very out there comments are deleted for the sake of my other readers. So, you know, if you could be forthright and honest about your feelings and what you think these, what you think these symbols mean, what does trans really mean to you? Why is it necessary for you to be the, the only woman, for instance. Why do you have to be the very best w woman and shove all the women out? Why can't I have a life? Why can't I have a male friend? What does this mean to you? Why is it so important? You know? I can't figure it out. There's so many people in the world you know, you can have your own social cir circle in which you're, you're greatly admired. You're the star of the show. You're the star of the nightclub. Everyone wants you. You don't need to keep coming around me. Why me? You know? You can find a nanny that, that really loves you no matter what. I'm not that person. You know? I say it like I see it. I see something really wrong. Something's really wrong. If for 24 years you've been stuck on stalking me. There's something really wrong. You know? Just get on with it. Go on with your life. Be with your own circle of admirers. You don't need to do anything at all with regard to me, don't you think? I. It must be very expensive. Why do this? You know, just don't do it anymore. I ask you, why stalk? Why not let it go? Even if, say, you are obsessive compulsive, you can easily switch that obsession and that compulsion to another object. Or maybe all day long, switch, 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 you know, so that, so that people are not so greatly affected by the stuckness of that obsession. Then, as far as a makeup artist is concerned, you know, I I don't relate to that. I do my own makeup, you know. So I I think they're doing a wonderful job with you. I, I'm glad that you have a makeup artist. As far as a nun is concerned, I think that you should leave clerical orders to the people that earn them and not pretend to be a nun or a Montignor or pastor, you know, just let those people be because you're talking more about the profane than the sacred, I feel. You, you feel that hatred is a form of loving relationship, I think, but, but it's not. When you really enjoy the presence of another person, that's a good relationship. That's a relationship that's full of light. When you go to a place in order to create darkness, as has seemed to be the case, like dumping on me, you know, 
in all these places. That's not love, that's hatred. You see, there's a very great difference between love and hatred. One is light, good for light workers. One is dark, not good for light workers, not good for anyone. Okay, and if you would just please keep in mind that I'm really a light worker, posing as a regular conservative straight woman, but, but, but not in my heart like that. I'm a light worker, okay? I'm posing as a, as a conservative straight woman. You're posing as a very uh, alluring, very attractive, show-stealing, sexual woman, okay? Well, we don't need to conflict over this because my true role in life is light worker. I, I don't think I'm getting anywhere with this, except to say that the, the roles that you create all around you and then show to me, they have nothing at all to do with me. You know, it's not my purpose to be on earth and to relate to the trans, to the nanny, to the makeup artist, or to the fake nun. It's just not my role, you see. It's like you're trying to fit a, a round peg into a square hole. I, I get that you might want to kill me because I don't fit your worldview, right? But you can just say, Spirit to team, optimize timelines and dimensions for the all through free will, and you'll find yourself in a world where I don't exist. That's for definite. Okay, so if you optimize your timelines and dimensions, you'll find me, the millstone around your neck, the obstacle that you have to eliminate at all costs, gone from your universe forever. You don't have to be a subject to cause and effect. Just because you were born of a mother doesn't mean you have to carry a mother like a millstone around your neck for the rest of your life. I don't have to be that person. And I am not that person. I'm a light worker. I hope this helps, but I have a feeling it's, it's just not on point because I'm not in that world and I don't know what's going on. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days in love, light, and joy. This is Alice B. Claggett. I am of the stars, and so are you. Come and visit me at Awakening with Planet Earth. https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com mm -hmm.